All right, so now that we have at least the basic setup, it's time for us to look at uh, putting together the model, which will model after each item that we're adding to the database. Now, there's different ways to do this. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to create a stateless widget, which in return will create one instance of a an item that we are adding to our database, in this case, a no to do item list. Okay, so we could have just created a to do or not to do class, which will be a model. But in this case, why not create an actual class that is also a stateless widget, which returns a widget, it's easier that way. What I mean by that is the following. Okay, if that makes no sense, I'm going to go to model, say new, create a new dart class, I'm going to call this no do item, like such, say import material. Okay, so I'm going to create a stateless class called no do item. Okay, like that. And what I'm going to do here, because this is a stateless widget, but also, like I said, it's going to, it is indeed a model. Okay, I'm going to have a few instance variables here. I'm going to say string, I'm going to make all of them private. The underscore item name, string underscore date created good that's those are the things we want to show and then string oh actually it's going to be int id as such okay let me go ahead and create a a constructor here i'm going to add all of these except the int because that's generated automatically for now anyway so there we go we we're setting up our no do item class constructor here and setting everything up for us. And the next thing I'm going to do because I know this is going to be related, of course, to the database. So I'm going to create the mapping and the deciphering of our uh, object here of our class no do item, which is indeed a model for a single item that we put it in the database. Okay, so if you remember the previous video when I introduced databases, you saw that we need a way of mapping the object with what we get in from the database as a list and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, create another uh, constructor here for our, our no do item. Let's say dot map. So in this case, I'm going to be mapping what a dynamic object. Okay, so anything that comes in. And so I'm going to say this dot item name, just map it with this object here, which is going to be item name, copy this. And it's going to be date created. Date created as such. And then the last is going to be ID, and it's just going to be ID coming from the database. So we're mapping whatever we're getting into an actual object here, okay. setting up our instance variables. All right. Okay, so uh, because for simplicity, I'm going to create getters here, set get, say item name, it's going to just return item name, string, get item uh, let's say date created just going to return date created instance there we go instance variable such and of course while we're here i'm going to say int get id it's going to just return id make sure that it's instance variable that it was set up that we're returning okay let's keep going here i'm going to create another map uh, it's going to be strings that we're expecting and dynamic. So anything really generic object. Uh, I'm going to call this to map. So we're going the other way around. Okay. Like, again, if this makes it's not really making a lot of sense, please go back to previous section so you understand exactly what's happening here. But if you don't want to go to previous sections, it's just we're mapping things back and forth so that they comply with the object that we're getting from database and making them objects uh, that are which we are modeling to in this section in this class. All right, so we're gonna say var map new map string dynamic 
as such. Okay, so I'm creating my new map object here, and then I'm going to use it and start mapping things around. In this case, I want the item name to receive whatever item that we're getting. Okay, and then I want to do the same thing. Date created is going to receive, in this case, date created. I'm going to say if to make sure that uh, our ID is not null that we're receiving from the database. Then we're going to say map ID. ID just like that okay of course all said and done we have to return our map which will have all of the things mapped out from our object cool now let's do the from map so the other way around I'm going to say no do item dot from map okay so if it's coming in as a map uh, it's going to be string and dynamic call this map and then we we'll just set up this item name I'm gonna map it to item name and make sure that these names here are all the same these these strings that we are giving the names to okay otherwise P things are not gonna work as expected and of course we don't want that now date created is gonna be the same map date created and this dot ID, make sure we're getting the instance variable IDs. That's very important to distinguish. That's why we have them private, as you can see. ID like that. Okay. So you notice that from map is the opposite of the map, right? And here is we're mapping. We we are taking all of these items, we're setting up all of our internal fields or instance variables to the objects that we're getting so that they become actual objects. From map, we're going from the other way around. So now they're coming in as a map and we're making it setting all the items we're getting, keys from the map, into actual setting our um, instance variables or fields. So now here, as you can see, we're actually building our widget. So what is it that we're going to be sending and showing to the user? So what we're going to do here, we're going to go ahead and uh, return a container. But this container, we're going to give it a margin. I'm going to use a constant here, say edge insets all, because I want the all of the edges of the screen here, of this container, to have a margin of about 8.0. And you can play around with this to find a good place for you. So child here, I'm going to say new row, I'm going to add in row. And this row here, I'm going to make sure that it's cross axis alignment to be from the start. Okay. And then I'm going to keep going here for children, I'm going to pass in a few things. Now, so what we're doing here is that we are creating this actual row, like what is going to be spit out, what the user is going to be able to see and interact with. That's what we're doing. Okay, we're customizing our row here. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to create a new text, I can just say go ahead text, I could say new, but as of the newest version of Flutter, you will notice that you can actually ditch the new and just go to straight to text. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say pass the item name because that's what I want to show okay as you can see it's gonna be at the top there and I'm gonna give it a style because we are stylish people I'm gonna say style a new text style I wonder if I can ditch that yes I can there we go and I'm gonna say color so my colors that white just want a straight white I want to have font weight to say font weight um, to be about bold. There we go. Font size. Font size. I want it to be about 16.9. Okay. That's 
very good. Below that, what we want to do is we want to create another container. Say comma here, say new container. And now in this container here, I'm going to do the same thing, say margin, say const, edge insets only, because I want just one side to have some sort of margin here, which is in this case, I want a top to have a margin of about 5.0. So what we're we saying again here is that, so we did this one here, top um, row or top text. Now we're saying this text here, we want to have a space of about five units from the top, okay? That's what we're doing here. And the next I'm gonna say child, it's gonna be text, of course, and I'm gonna say here, created on, and of course, I'm going to go ahead and pass date created as such. And while I'm here, I'm going to give it a style. You know why? I'm going to say start text style. Let's just give it color. Colors. That white. 70, so a little bit darker. And we're going to give a font size of about 13.5 units and then font style let's see we want this to be font italic like that okay of course you're not going to see anything yet because this is going to remember this is part of the no to do item model so each time when we create each model that's when we're going to push it into the view so users can actually interact with okay all right, so there we go. So we are pretty much done with our uh, no do item, which models one instance of an item that we're going to be adding. So essentially, one of these rows. Of course, we're going to add this button here uh, at a later time in a different file, and you will see how to do that in, in a little bit. Perfect. So this has been great. Um, we're making good progress here, and I will see you in the next video.